So this is problem number 10. It's from the 2012 AP Calc multiple choice set. Non-calculator question here. And it says, what is the area of the region of the first quadrant bounded by this graph in the line x equals 2? So you're going to want to have a graph that you can visualize and, and do some sketching with in order to answer a question like this. Uh, x equals 2 is obviously here. It does tell us first quadrant. So we have this as a boundary, the, the y-axis is a boundary, and the x-axis is a boundary. You do have to kind of reason out what this graph is going to look like. Um, e to a power is always going to be positive, and e to the 0 is going to be 1. So if you're at e to the, if, if you take e to the 0, which is equal to 1, and plot 0 comma 1, and then you also plot e to the 2 over 2, that's e to the first, and that's going to give you 2.7. Right, So this graph is going to increase, much like the graph of e to the x does, uh, from the point on the y-axis, which is your left-hand boundary, to the point that we have over here on our right-hand boundary for the region. It's basically just a stretching of the graph of y equals e to the x. So this region right here, we want the area of it. If you slice the region vertically, that's a good choice because the top of every vertical slice is on this function. The bottom of every vertical slice is on the x-axis. So if I draw my slice and I pretend it's a rectangle or approximate it as if it's a rectangle, it's not because it's not perfectly flat at the top here. But if I approximate the slice's area as if it were a rectangle, I would need to know the height of the slice and I would multiply by the width of the slice. The width of the slice is a tiny, tiny difference in x values, right? However far I decided to draw these two vertical lines that give the borders of the slice from each other, that's what the width is. That's going to be defined as delta x. Now, the height of the slice, we have to make sure we're a little more careful with. We need to make sure it's positive. The height is a vertical dimension, and if a vertical dimension has to be positive, we need to take the bigger y value, which is always higher up in the coordinate plane, and the higher y value, no matter where we would have drawn the slice, in the middle of the region where I have it, over toward the left or the right edge of the region, the top of every possible slice that we could have drawn is going to be on this graph. So the y value on that graph is that y is equal to e to the x over 2. And then the bottom y value, no matter where I choose to draw the slice, is 0. So the area of the slice would be approximated by taking this and multiplying by this, right? Height times width. Uh, I want to add together all possible slices areas within this region. Well, by definition, a definite integral adds together infinitely many products of this form for us. So if I integrate this expression, the integral does the rest of the work and adds together infinitely many of these slices areas. So I have the expression here that I need to integrate. It doesn't ask for the expression that represents the area. It asks for the area. So we do have to go through a, a little bit more work here. Uh, if I'm trying to evaluate a definite integral by hand, I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I would need the antiderivative of this. One thing that's easy to overlook here is the fact that this is going to require a u substitution. The integral of e to the x is e to the x plus c. Uh, the integral of e to the x over 2, because there's an inner function here, we're going to have to let u equal that inner function and go through a little substitution sequence. So just to try to run through that real fast, this is really 1 half x. So the derivative of 1 half x is 1 half. And when I try to figure out what to replace the dx with, I can multiply the dx across. I can, multi I can multiply the du by 2. So t 2 du replaces the dx. u replaces the exponent. And when you evaluate a definite integral with u substitution, when the differential changes from what it starts out as, dx, to what you're turning it into, du, these limits of integration need to also transition from the values they start as, which are x values, to the corresponding values of the new variable. So the u values that correspond to these x values need to appear as the new lower and upper limits of integration. Those are really easy to figure out. You have this expression right here that u is equal to x over 2. So if you know this is an x value and you're trying to find the u value that corresponds to it, put 2 in place of the x. 2 over 2 is 1. So that's your new upper limit of integration. And then put this x value in place of x. 0 over 2 is your new lower limit of integration. Antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u, technically plus c. But when you're using an antiderivative to find a definite integral value, you don't need to represent it because you're going to take a difference in another line here anyhow. 
I do have to remember that this two snuck in through the substitution sequence. So whatever the answer to this evaluated at the upper and lower limits after I take a difference is, I have to multiply that by two. So evaluate at the upper, evaluate at the lower. E to the zero is one. So if I have e to the first minus one and I distribute this two back in, I end up with option A.